Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger.
Trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. They say that wherever there's a drug problem, you have a trafficking problem. Those two go hand in hand. Why weren't the people arrested who were seeking out and purchasing another human being for an hour? It is here. It has, it has come through. Um, and there's the potential for it, for it to continue. I showed every marker for severe abuse and the services weren't there. It's um, interesting to talk about my childhood with people from this community because growing up, there definitely seemed to be something a bit off. I didn't talk a whole lot and, um, you know, I was skittish and quiet and I think a lot of people just thought I was kind of weird. <laughs> but um, I was coping with an environment at home um, where I was being trafficked and sexually abused. And it's become really important to me as an adult to not just walk my journey of trauma recovery and healing, but to also speak out about this um, invisible uh, crisis we have that's ongoing in our community and what, help people identify what they can do in their lives to help alleviate that suffering. Trafficking is any time one person sells another person for the commercial sexual exploitation of that person in exchange for anything of value. It can be a pen, it can be a, a case of beer, it, it can be something that has value. It doesn't have to always be cash. It can be a gun, it can be drugs. Whatever you're exchanging, if you're selling another person and receiving something of value in return for that, that's the commercial sexual, sexual exploitation of humans. And that's what we're referring to. And that's what's happening in our communities. It's huge here. Um, I think part of it's because the highways all intersect in Williamsport and so it's really easy to get to lots of major cities you know Philly Pittsburgh New York City um, down to even Baltimore it's really easy access um, and with the truckers and the gas coming in you know there just was a lot of demand I had a, a dual household growing up you know from a result of divorce which a lot of us do and in one of my households um, my mother she was a pedophile and so she didn't only abuse us but she also um, trafficked me um, in order to um, secure resources for her drug abuse um, and that's it's something we don't talk about often but um, is really a issue and it's been an issue and I'd really like to see more visibility to it because if we can break down the stigma people are going to be more comfortable talking about their experiences and if we can get a level of comfort comfortability talking about really uncomfortable topics then um, we can get services and we can get resources to fund those services so that people can heal you know we we deserve to heal anyone who even if you had a small trauma like the passing of a parent or a grandparent it takes a long time to work through that and so these girls are having to work through every single moment of this happening to them and so it takes a long time this was going on um, while I attended different schools in the area. We moved um, quite a bit, so it was, you know, South Williamsport, Newberry, Montoursville district area. Um, I attended the local Catholic schools, um, and I mean, oof. <laughs> I don't even like to think about that period of time. Some victims have been told that they're free to leave, but maybe a younger sibling will take their place. They've been threatened, they've been um, beaten, they've been tortured. They, many of them are addicts because the trafficker will use drugs to add that to how to be able to manipulate them and, and how to continue to have that power and control over them. So they get them addicted to a variety of drugs and tell them that not only do these drugs help with the pain of what they're suffering and what they're enduring, but they will um, it will have that mind-altering effect. It will give that trafficker the power to, you know, control them and to get them to do what they want them to do. Can you imagine having 17 strangers use your body for their own gratification? Sometimes they beat you because that's how they get off. Um, and you have to do whatever it is that they ask of you or your pimp's going to beat you. 
Um, so she's just living through hell in a way that we can't even imagine. A lot of people think that children will speak up, but one of the things they don't understand is when someone in a position of power, an adult in a child's life says to them, if you tell anyone, you'll go to foster care. You'll never see your family again. If you tell anyone, I'm gonna hurt your sibling. If you tell anyone, God won't love you. You make a statement like that to a child, they're not going to say anything. They're going to box it away and they're going to keep themselves safe and their family safe and their world safe to the best of their ability. One of the seminars that we did put on was for, it was, I think it was probably the first one for law enforcement in Lycoming County. And the response from law enforcement, probation, we may have had some school teachers there, I'm not certain on that anymore, it's been a while. But the response was they didn't know what human trafficking was, which is understandable. Law enforcement, and some still because they haven't had the education, consider it prostitution. Big difference. In the past years, we've definitely ramped up our, our education, our knowledge, and, and basically having the mindset to look at a situation and say, hey, this could be human trafficking versus this could just be prostitution or this could um, just be normal in, in the workforce. There's been more education provided, there's been more awareness, there's been more brought to the table to uh, inform people of how human trafficking is affecting our rural communities in Pennsylvania and what we can do to report that. That is something that Silent No More is doing is um, we're providing free services, free counseling and therapy services to um, survivors and we're um, evaluating their situations to identify serial predators and serial pedophiles in the community and to stop them from being able to have access to victims. We're um, helping work with local agencies such as the police um, and the advocacy centers and um, just trying to help improve a system that right now is reactive um, into a system that is proactive. We're beginning to see an uptick in uh, reports and an uptick in self-reporting by some people because of the education programs and the information being out to the public. We also want to get out to our hotel industry, our trucking industry, um, the service centers and gas stations and educate them about what what to look for what they what they see but also what to do if they, if they think that there's that there's something going on um, our medical field and other professionals uh, in in the area whether it be the police uh, the ho people at the hospital or our social workers we want to make sure that they understand what they're what they're looking at and also give them the information to be able to uh, get out and report such matters, but if they're going to be the ones that are actually going to run into a possible matter of human trafficking, it's important to be able to arm them and educate them in a way that they understand where they can pass on the information to the actual victims of human trafficking at the time. So they themselves can maybe help themselves and, and realize that, hey, I'm in a dangerous, bad situation. There is help. We're there to help you. The therapy was the cornerstone to me being able to have the coping skills I needed to figure out who I was, you know, because if you spend your whole life surviving, you know, and you don't get that time to take a step back and say, oh, this is why I'm scared, this is what I'm dealing with, that is really serious, and here are some ways I can cope with that. And once you have some tools in your toolkit, I think it starts to get a little easier and you start to like enjoy life and then you start to build connections with people on a, on a basis of health and trust and, and that's what life is about so you're actually living your life as you. Therapy allows you, when, you're, when you need trauma recovery, it gives you an opportunity to live your life as you. Like, what? <laughs>